Why Britain is the center of the world. Whatever. Here it is. Here's the original one. I think there's this misnomer that my orange coat is dead, but no, it's just dying quickly. There's just a good amount of this going on. But I think this thing has a couple more years for sure. So this is my desk. I sit here all day and I work and I look at this map whenever I'm daydreaming. I just look at this map. Why is that so loud? I bought this map off eBay and it was in like an elementary school and now it's in my office. I notice something every time I look at it that kind of irks me. That something is this. This zero. This zero, which is not just one number, but it's actually a corresponding line that looks like this. Let's back up here for a second. The Earth is divided into lines. Sometimes they're curved like they are on my map. And whether or not they're curved or straight has to do with this concept of projection, which I'm not going to talk about here. I've talked about plenty using a knife and a globe back in an old Vox video that I made. But just know that the Earth is divided up into lines, latitude and longitude lines, ones that go up and down, Wowie. and ones that go from side to side. All of these lines in the grid have I wish was a bald. number associated. <laughs> so for the up and down lines, there's a zero point, and then anywhere to right the here. right of that or east of that starts to go up from zero to 180 with a little E next to it for east of the zero line. And then everything to the left or the west of it has the same thing, zero to 180 with a W for west, okay? That center point is the zero point from which all east and west things are measured. The same thing for these side to side lines. If you go up from here, you're gonna start to get higher and higher until you get to 180 degrees north. Or if you go south, you will go 180 degrees south, which is the South Pole. Finding out where the zero point should be for these horizontal lines is actually quite easy. The Earth has these two natural poles, which make for a natural top and bottom of the Earth. And halfway in between those two poles, you have this perfect center point, the equator, which is a very natural place to put this zero point and to measure everything from. The up and down lines are totally arbitrary where you decide them. Like, who's to say that, like, it couldn't be right here in Russia and this could be zero and everything could go west and east from here? Or Japan, for that matter? Well, in fact, a long time ago, that's how it used to be. These maps with these grids were really, really important for navigating the world, and so everyone had to choose a zero point. And most would just make their capital or their home base the zero point. If you okay. lived in Japan, you would just make Japan the zero point, and oh. the rest of the coordinates would be measured against that one. Now I am curious. Why is like point, which was Japan? And why did we settle France on or the UK's Washington, one? DC. This was fine because back then countries kind of just fought wars and competed with each other. They weren't really collaborating or aligning I, or trading. I still want to hear the story. I understand today. why, but and so everyone could just have their own maps centered around their place, and they did just fine. But then around the 1800s, a few things started to happen that completely changed everything. Audio guy First, needs to be fired countries and empires, instead of just competing and fighting with each other, started to actually say, like, we should align with each other and trade and be friends because that's better for everyone. Pair this with the fact that <laughs> Wait, what map that making and First, countries and empires, instead of just competing Fuck, and fighting with back. each other, started to actually say, like, we should align with each other and trade and be friends because that's better for everyone. Okay, they still fought tons of wars. Okay. Compare this to the <laughs> fact that map making and sea navigation was becoming like a big industry. It was no longer just the king ordering maps to be made for their like expeditions, but now it was like private businesses going out and doing things that private businesses do. And so there was now like a demand for good seafaring maps. In short, map making was trending. Seems like a pretty good time to be alive. Okay, and there was one more thing that was happening around this time that was super important, which is this. 
Trains. Trains. Trains <laughs> everywhere. Trains were just like popping up everywhere. And trains were okay, also so trending. People were now able to travel like across the country, not just like on their horses, but on this whole system of trains where you could buy a ticket, get on a train, and end up somewhere hundreds of miles away. And you know what trains run on, besides coal, is time, timetables, schedules. How do you know when your train's gonna arrive and when it's gonna leave and when it's gonna get there? Time, some universal set time. The problem is, back in the 1800s, there was no universal set time. Check out this piece of paper. Oh, Today, fuck. all of these cities and towns would be just on Eastern Standard Time, one time zone. But back then, every town had their own time, depending on when it was noon for them. If they were a little bit east or a little bit west of here, that would be different than in Washington. Bro, fuck that. Can you imagine? Oh my god. <laughs> this is so complicated. What? Nah, you fuck see, that. Total nightmare for trains. <laughs> no. The lifeblood of trains is time. And this time mishmash just wasn't going to work. Okay, so what does all of this have to do with this? Okay. Look at this guy. Okay, I'm looking. You probably don't know who this person is. I didn't know who this person was. He was the US president that no one remembers. This US president in the late 1800s saw a problem with all of What's this. What's his name? He realized that having a bunch okay. of different maps with a bunch of different zero points based on whoever was making it was a problem. And he realized that not having a universal time zone or some sort of universal way of making the same time for everyone was also a problem. So he invited 41 countries to come here oh, it's set to on the Washington, screen? DC, oh. where I live, and to sit around and think and talk about where this zero point should be. Where should the center of the world be so that we can measure time as well as navigation. All maps could be normalized to this one spot. So after a moment of a bunch of white dudes sitting around in a room in Washington, D.C., which is kind of what's happening today in Washington, D.C., they came to a vote. And that vote, you almost unanimously, said that the zero line should be right here. Okay. This line, if you zoom in, goes right through London, England. It actually goes through a little outskirts town called Greenwich. Greenwich is the home of the Royal Observatory of the British Empire. This would be the place where the prime meridian or the zero point for the entire world, east and west, would start. Every country at the conference agreed that this should be the case, except for the Dominican Republic at that time called Santo Domingo. They said no. They were the one country that didn't like this proposal. And France and Brazil actually abstained diplomatically, which was kind of them saying like, oh, we don't agree with this. France continued to make their maps with Paris as the center point, but eventually <laughs> they got on board as well. So that gets to the crux of my big question of fuck. why the zero right there, which is a bunch of people voted on it, but why were they so down with Britain having the zero point being <laughs> the center of the world? Well, the answer is because it was 1884 and Britain was just really good at the ocean. The British Empire was by far the biggest, most powerful navy. They had the most experience with maps and ocean faring. And so it was kind of a natural choice to let Britain, the king of the ocean, have this center point. And from then on, maps started to be drafted with Greenwich, this Royal Observatory, as the center point for the east-west divide in the world. Over time, this exact point, exactly where it's drawn, has shifted a tiny bit because of better tools to measure things. And so it's actually a, like not literally on the Royal Observatory anymore, but it's effectively in the same place that was drawn in this 1884 conference. But they also established that all time in the entire world would be measured against this same spot, Greenwich. Noon at Greenwich, at the Royal Observatory, would be the peg against which all other time was set. They called this Greenwich Mean Time. So you end up getting a map that looks like this. Damn, okay. Zoom in and you see Greenwich is right here. That's GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. Fuck you, okay. I said that at first. You go west of here and you start to get GMT minus one or minus <laughs> two, minus three. You can come all the way back to the east coast of the United States and Where this is GMT time zone spamming? is Greenwich Mean Time minus five right now. Sometimes it's minus four if there's daylight savings and daylight savings is dumb and whatever. But you get the idea. 
the more you go west, you go back from Greenwich Mean Time. If you go east, it's the opposite. You go forward to Greenwich Mean Time. So if it's noon at Greenwich, then this next time zone, it'll be 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., etc. So these time zones have been marked up in these kind of strange shapes. Eventually, if you go 12 steps away from Greenwich, 12 oh, times... Oh, what the fuck? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. What the fuck? Why, why do these look like states? Why are they not just straight lines? You know? I guess cities? And cities didn't want to get that complicated? But like... Man, who the fuck lives in negative 12? <laughs> what's going on? Like, is anyone in there? Hey, what's going on in negative 11? These fucking islands? What? I don't know. I, I, I understand that it's probably like some complicated shit, but this is very weird. The way some of this is. Time zones, you'll end up here at this mess. This mess is the International Dateline. This is where Greenwich Mean Time plus 12 or minus 12 ends up at this line, which is where a new day starts. So let me give you an example of what this would look like. Imagine it's 4 p.m. in Greenwich, England, right okay. here at this Royal Observatory. Yep. It is 4 p.m. GMT on May 28th. If anyone wants to send me a birthday gift, May 28th. <clears throat> May 28th. It's May 28th at 4 p.m. GMT. Greenwich Mean Time, okay. sitting, chilling in the Royal Observatory, which I've never actually been to. I need to go to the Royal Observatory. I Stop with these fucking comments in between. Year, next year, at some point. Okay, so it's 4 p.m., May 28th. Across the ocean here in Washington, D.C. at that time, you can see that we go from 4 p.m. minus 5, so 11 a.m., okay? So it's 11 a.m. here in Washington, D.C. at that exact time on May 28th. Head across the United States to the west coast of the United States to Seattle or Portland, and right there it's three hours earlier than it is here. You're now at 8 a.m. So it's 8 a.m. here, it's still 4 p.m. in Greenwich. It's still 4 p.m. in London. Now you head into the Pacific Ocean, keep going west until you get to French Polynesia, at which time it's five in the morning. You're now GMT minus 11, it's five in the morning. And then you get right up to this messy line. If you were to be in the Baker Islands, which is like a US, like random uninhabited island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you would be at 4 a.m. So it's 4 p.m. over in Greenwich. It's 4 a.m. on this random island in the Pacific. So then cross this messy looking line. It's still 4 a.m., but now it's the next day. It's May 29th at 4 a.m. Here in Fiji, at the same time, 4 p.m. at Greenwich, it's now 4 a.m. the next day, May 29th. So we went from being 12 hours behind Greenwich to being 12 hours in front of Greenwich just by going over this international date line. What you the could fuck? do this exact same thing going the other way. Start heading east and you see that you know, it's 5 p.m. and funny. 6 p.m. and 7 p.m head all the way over into Asia, and now you're getting closer to seeing how that 4 a.m. happens when you get over to Fiji. Now the caveat to all of this, is, of course, is that some of these countries switch by an hour for like daylight savings type things and whatever, but ignore that. Imagine there wasn't daylight savings. Right now in this moment where daylight savings is at least end in the United States, this holds across the whole world. Someday I'll make a video about this whole messy debacle but the yeah, point that, of all like, this that looks is to ridiculous. Say that because of this conference in 1884 to reconcile train timetables and to make maps okay. more uniform, we now have this navigation and time system that rules our whole world. And Britain is just sitting at the center of it, of course. The British Empire may have fallen and the world has moved on from Britain being the center of the world in a lot of ways, but it's still technically the center of the world in a lot of ways i'm gonna put some links in the description for some of these cool tools that come. all right yeah i wonder if we're ever gonna be like a universal time See, i fucking hate having to like manage times or time zones it pisses me the fuck off no 
I mean, there is UTC, but like, I wonder if it's ever going to like be used in like the next 500 years if we haven't killed each other with nuclear bombs. Say we live in a world where like, you know what? World hunger has been fixed slightly more so like there's no third world countries. It's a little more even and we're like a functioning planet together, right? There's no, none of that. Like a thousand years from now. Maybe then we'll have that, you know, universal time. And people won't have to deal with, you know, finding out what time you land in this state, you know. Like, gosh. I don't want anyone going through that pain. Ridiculous. <laughs> World hunger, or whatever. Dude, these time zones. I swear, I can't wait. <laughs> If there was no third world countries, there would be no cheap product streamer. Yeah, you're right. That would definitely change a whole lot of things. I don't know. A thousand years from now, we'll all be dead. So who knows? All right. Um, right. I'm fucking done. Exactly. I don't think he gets it. Nice. Okay. Thank you, Twitch chat. All right. I'll be on uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I have a very poggers Overwatch sponsorship. Ch -ch 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 so very fun um i've been bought but i'm very excited uh so tomorrow overwatch and maybe more dark and darker all right uh have a great night everyone have uh whatever the fuck all right i'll see y'all